Griffin, um, after the 2013 election, uh, what did you take away from your defeat, and uh, what do you think you've learned from it that would be able to help you in your return uh, to the Board of Selectmen? Well, I will be the first one to admit it certainly did give me a, I feel like I have a new perspective. Um, one, one of the main things that I uh, see today is I have a, a new respect for other people's opinion. Um, and I think it was, uh, it was good to basically have a little time off. Uh, I enjoyed always serving the board. And um, I think that having a new respect for other people's opinion has given me a, a new perspective for many of the problems that face the town of Hampton. So I've got to look at both sides. And I think that I'm, when I come back, I'll have a fresh outlook for many things. Thank you. Thank you. Question for everyone, and this could be a yes and a no. Um, what is your position on the petition warrant article, which calls for the town to stop picking up commercial trash? I'm definitely opposed to it also. Mr. Nichols, um, the, the newcomers, so n not Mr. Pearson, not Mr. Nichols. Um, antagonism, no civility, a lack of respect, those are the words that Ben Moore used to describe the tenor of the board of selectmen when he resigned from the board in June. Um, do, do you believe that that's accurate? It takes five to make up the Board of Selectmen. I have worked well with most of these candidates that are running and all the sitting board members. I get along in general well with people and can work. I, the nine years that I worked as I was a Selectman, I didn't have any of the incidents that have been characteristic of this year. I've worked well with people in the past and I'll work well with people in the future. I always try to be respectful of other people's views and I always try to re be respectful of the voters that voted for all of us. To me that's very important. Thank you, Mr. So, uh, for the newcomers first, um, do, you <laughs> do you agree with the priorities the board has displayed over the past year? If not, where would you have focused your energy? Um, having had the year off, again bringing that up, uh, I will tell you that very little has changed in the last year. The things that were worked on all this year were things that have been in the works for the last several years. Uh, I so for to me, there really hasn't been a lot of progress in the last year. I'm not criticizing that, but it's it seems to me that it's been business as usual. Uh, I'm more focused on what's going to happen in these next three years, and I think you know, there's a lot of important things that are going to happen. Hampton's facing a lot of changes with department heads. Uh, there are going to be people retiring and people um, stepping down. <coughs> also, Mr. Welch's contract is up in the next two years. And to me, that's the most important thing that we're going to be facing. The most important thing a selectman can do is hiring the town manager. And I'm a believer, I am a believer of having a good town manager that can take over, and I don't see the Board of Selectmen as being here to micromanage the town manager and the department heads. Thank you. Thank you, Brief answers, and I just, uh, the Massachusetts U.S. Senators and six of its 11 U.S. Representatives uh, recently sent a letter to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission recommending that basically that the license um, for Seabrook Station not be renewed into um, they deal with their concrete degradation problem. Is this an issue that Hampton should get involved in? Repeat the question, please. Uh, essentially, do you think the Hampton should um, get involved with the, um, the relicensing of the plant? Um, some of the U.S. Senators and state representatives have written letters that saying that it should not be relicensed until the plant deals with its uh, concrete degradation issues. This is something that's, as far as the problem with the tunnels and the um, tax relief that the um, Nextera is looking for, this is something that's been going on several years. and. Uh, I know that the town has spent a lot of money uh, trying to come to an answer about the uh, tax uh, relief that they're asking for. So it's something that we've been working on a couple of years. Whether we should go further and try to make sure there are more safeguards, I mean, I think that's something we would do ordinary anyway. Um, so that's just something that we would always be looking forward to taking care of. Mr. Good question. Uh, yes. Now that the old courthouse and old town hall has been torn down, uh, what would you like to see that land used for? 
There, could, there are many things that could be considered. Amongst them are the schools, the library. People keep talking about a senior citizen center. It's been brought up for many times. But I think that right now I agree with Mr. Nichols that our big problem that we have are the roads and infrastructure issues, the drainage. And I think just having that is like having uh, money in the bank and we should just sit on it until the time comes when we know what we need to do there. Um, would you support a ballot initiative to allow bars in Hampton to push back last call from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m.? Yes, I come from Florida where they have much later hours. You know, there's all, it, depending on what town you're in, it's either 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, or 4 o'clock. And having moved here to New Hampshire, I think 1 o'clock works out fine, and I, I, wouldn't, I would definitely not be in favor of seeing it extended. So I'm going to ask each of the candidates to, if they, if they would like, um, give us some closing remarks, a minute or two, uh, about why they're running, why they would like to be elected um, as, a, uh, as a selectman to the Board of Selectmen. One thing I want to clear up, I just said that I uh, was from Florida. I, have, I grew up in Florida, but I've been a summer resident of Hampton since 1963, and then I've had my business here in Hampton for 40 years. I enjoyed serving on the board previously and developed a knowledge of how the town operates at the selectman level over the nine years of my service. Another one of the most, in, one of the more important issues that's been brought out here several times tonight, and I was glad to hear everybody say something about it, keeping Hamptons over 30 miles of roads in top condition requires prioritizing and being aware of what must be done when an emergency arises. Keeping Hampton's buildings and infrastructure in good condition is going to save money in the future. Hampton has spent a lot of money in the past already prioritizing how these roads and drainage needs to be dealt with. So that's something I'm quite aware of. Many people in Hampton remember when taxes were going up at an alarming rate. The last seven years I served on the board, the tax burden from the selectman side of the budget was down or level. This is unprecedented in recent years in Hampton. When Dick Nichols announced his candidacy in the Hampton Union, I'll have to, he, I will quote him as saying that he said the taxes stayed level over the last six years, and he says it really started about seven years ago. And it did start seven years ago, and that's when I was there. I, along with the other five members of the Board of Selectmen, did keep, get the tax ball, you know, the lowering of the taxes. We got the ball rolling. And the years that Dick and the other members were on the board, I was the chairman two of those years. I have probably the best record for being fiscally conservative of anybody sitting at this table because I probably I served a couple more years. Uh, and the, t the tax rate did be start to become level seven years ago. <coughs> I also was on the board when we built the fire stations, we worked on that for many, many years. The pump station, the sewer infrastructure, the $12 million bond, I helped uh, get that rolling. And a lot of people forget that when we did put that infrastructure in, people expected there to be uh, you know, some expansion at the beach. And how that is done is going to be very important. And I think that's a big issue that we're going to be dealing with in the future. I would just like to close and say that I'm a consensus builder, I'm fiscally conservative but responsible, and I definitely believe in harmony. And please vote for me on Tuesday, March 11th. Thank you.